What is up everybody, welcome back to another Jack Attacks video. In today's video, this is going to be part one of like a three part series that I want to do. Where I'm going to be doing one run with every character in Rose of Rain 2 on the easiest difficulty. And I'm going to aim to beat the final boss, Mythrix, with each character. And this is going to get, this is going to be like a three part series. If not, then more if I have to split each video into like two or three parts. And each video, it's going to get progressively more difficult. With the first video, I'm going to I'm gonna try to get as many characters as possible done on Drizzle, the easiest difficulty. Then the next video, I'm going to do the same thing, but on Rainstorm. And then the final video, the same thing, but on Monsoon. The Monsoon video, I might have my friend helping me. But if, I'm going to try to see if I won't, if, if I can get some skill from this. Because if I'm being honest, I, I have been playing a lot more like Fortnite and Minecraft and uh, Fortnite and Minecraft so yeah also just before this I'll explain some risk of rain one which is pretty fun tell me if you want me to make a video on that it's like polar opposite from, like, Risk of Rain 2, it's like, Risk of Rain 2 is a good graphics, um, 3D game, meanwhile, like, it's, like, 2D pixely, if you didn't know, just, if you didn't know. But yeah, I'm aiming for the fastest time. I'm um, trying to aim for a fast time with each character to beat Mythrix. But I'm not just going in with, like, no items per stage. I want to try to get at least two items per stage. I'm going to try to get that big chest there, because the big chests might have a chance to get me a red item. Already, I should have a round enough, almost. Yeah. Okay, I have enough for this big chest, and now I'm gonna go search for teleporter. If you guys haven't seen any of my other Risk of Rain 2 videos, do I have any? I'm pretty sure I do. I honestly can't remember if I made a video yet, but if I did, then go watch it. I think I did. Yeah, I did. If I didn't, then welcome to Risk of Rain 2. Oh yeah, we're almost at 100 subscribers, so hit that subscribe button. Yeah. Teleporter events just make this game turn into chaos the game I swear Makes it turn into even more chaos on monsoon like the other day I was playing a monsoon run as mercenary my character that I love using and um, I got all the way to stage four and I was fighting the wandering vagrant the big jellyfish thingy and then um, I got launched into the air and I was also at 3 HP I'm like, thankfully I had a cautious slug, so all I needed to do was go, like, behind a rock or something, and I'd heal pretty fast. But, like, all of a sudden, it's like, I hit nothing. I was in mid-air, and I just self-destruct for no reason. I didn't have fuel array, because I already got Rex, and I don't ever want to live through that pain again. Ooh, hey, a boss item, yay. Oh, alrighty. I have some skill with Commando. I mean, like, 
I have like one or no. Yeah, I have one of his unlockable moves already unlocked and that was kind of hard to get. I've survived like seven rounds as him. So I have some commando skill. One character that I suck at using though is Bandit. I am not excited for Bandit. The next character I'm excited about, Huntress. I, whenever I first played, I decided, you know, I'm gonna try out Commando first. That was a mistake, and I did not like him back then. But now I can use him. I mean, like, I can use almost every character. It's just I don't usually use Bandit. I mean, like, one day I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna get all the upgradable moves for these people. And that's where I got my fastest obliteration time on Drizzle. Where, um, obliteration is whenever you get to stage 8 and then you just obliterate yourself at this cool celestial portal thingy. I'm not gonna show it in this video. Because this video I'm trying to aim to beat the game, like, by beating the final boss. But... In a different video, or I might already have a video up where I try to obliterate and manage to succeed in obliteration. Um, but, like, basically, you get to stage 8, and then a celestial portal spawns. Once you go through, you have to complete some parkour that does not kill you, by the way. And then, um, you can just go to this thing called the obelisk, and, uh, you just click two buttons and then you've obliterated and you've unlocked my favorite character mercenary you want to know how long it took me to obliterate like back whenever me and my friend were absolute dog at this game i tried to get merc and that was not i did not have a good time that was not fun Yeah, I'm gonna try to hurry to teleporter now, wherever it is. The key to finding teleporter is those glowing orbs. Yeah, those glowing orangey orbs is a sign that there's teleporter there. I'm going to check out this. Is this a green one? Oh yeah, this is green. Alrighty, let's see. Wish they would have had one of the bands, but I'll save up for that razor wire there. Also, um, a fun little thing that I saw the other day was, um, that there's a mod, at least I think it's a mod, that allows you to get a special artifact that basically links all of your items together as a team. The Artifact of Unity is what they called it, and I'm not sure if it's an actual item, if it's an actual artifact, or... If it was like a modded thing because the same video they had a mod because they were trying to get the max number of bustling fungus, otherwise known as bungus. And yeah, they were trying to get the max bungus cap. And to be honest, I don't even think there is max bungus. I think you can just keep going until you cover like the entire map. You give me that red whip. Oh yeah, I love razor wire. And I like leeching seed. Because ha ha ha, take that damage. Leeching seed and monster orb is basically the two things that heal you whenever you do damage slash kill them. 
and they're good. Monster Orb is what's drop like I mean Monster Tooth is what's dropping these orbs, and Leeching Seed is what I got towards the start. That makes it so you can deal damage and get healed. Oh, hey, not good game. Yeah, Risk of Rain 1's actually pretty deep, pretty different with their teleporter, because they have different bosses, different, um, <coughs> <coughs> they got different bosses, they have a different way to charge it, because in Risk of Rain 2, how you charge it is, um, you just stay in a zone for long enough, without dying, and then you can click it and you're alive, yay, yay, yay. But, um, at in Risk of Rain 1, all you need to do is stay alive for a minute and a half. Open this up and dang it! It's still this is still like a red tier green, cause some greens are literally on tier with on literally on par with reds, like Kaijaros and Runnels bands, which basically makes it so that way one of your like your some of your attacks have a like a special way to like activate these like bands that basically either make icy stuff around the enemy or um either icy stuff or fiery stuff and when combined they do a ton of damage and they also have some good aoe that can freeze people around them or burn or both We, uh, okay. I think that. Oh, hey, an equipment thing. If I'm being honest, my favorite, like, enemy in this game. Definitely the Solus probes. Which don't actually spawn on their own, I'm pretty sure. They spawn with a special stage 4 boss. <gasps> yes, I love Zomerang! And, um... <coughs> and they basically, they just shoot little lasers. They're just so cute looking! Oh, frick, I hate this thing. This thing sucks. Thankfully, it gets shredded. Another Berserker's Pauldron. Yay. I love Berserker's Pauldron. It does so good. You know what a fun mob to play as would be? A fun, like, mob slash enemy to play as would probably be the imps. I mean, like, if they made a character that could, like, transform into mobs in, like, a DLC or something, then that'd be really fun. Because, I mean, like, you could turn into a bison and get their special moves or something. You could turn into a beetle guard even turn into a Lumerian if you wanted. I feel like the Lumerians are, um, their primary would be 
their fight would be their scratch attack that they can do. Whenever you get close, they can do like a scratch attack. And I feel like that'd be their primary. Their secondary would be the fireballs. And then I don't think Lumerians have any like special movement things, so they might just have to make something up. Or maybe there's only certain character, I mean, certain um, mobs they can turn into. I was hoping I could show you what the special boss thingy was in this run, but hey, eventually in one run, I have to eventually get um, something other than Wetland Aspect. Or that one that doesn't look right. Nothing there. Okay, I know where the red chest is now. Because if you guys also saw those pink flowers up there, then that means that there's a golden chest up there. I just gotta get up there. And then I can get the golden chest. Or at least I can check how much it needs. But yeah. Just gotta do some uh, parkour, you should say. To get there fast. Okay, it costs 13 19 Okay, I can get that much. Yeah, I'd be able to get that. I don't really like to activate the teleporter until I'm like a hundred away from getting it. Because one time I was like five money away after the teleporter. And after the teleporter, no mobs can spawn. So, it's like... I couldn't get the red chest that run. So yeah. I don't really like to activate the teleporter until I'm close. Also, you see that thing over there? See that? That's called a newt altar. It basically gives you a blue portal that allows you to go to a shop and buy things with these lunar coins that I have. Shred. Oh yeah, something funny that I'm gonna have to um, make a video on with my friends is a certain technique thing that you can do with um, a certain lunar item and 37 fuel cells and a Sommering. Um, so what you need is 37 fuel cells, or around that number, um, a gesture of the drowned, red, I mean, blue item, and, um, oh yeah, a Sommering. And basically what you do is you look in front of you, and then the gesture of the drowned, what the gesture of the drowned does is it auto-activates your equipment whenever it's, um, fully charged, but it, it reduces your cooldown as well. And, thir and what fuel cells do is they add an extra equipment charge and also reduce the cooldown. So, therefore, if you get a ton of E, therefore, if you get one gesture of the drowned, a ton of fuel cells, and a Sommering, you can look in front of you, and anything within range just gets their HP shredded. In fact, that's how my friend carried me through Mythrix one time. Because he shredded Mythrix. He just looked in he just looked at Mythrix when close and Mythrix his health bar just went down and down and down. It just didn't stop going down. Oh, dang it, I got the Berserker's Pauldron effect. Why are there no more enemies when near me? I'm just wandering around waiting for more enemies to spawn, if I'm being honest.
I might have to split this up into like multiple parts for each video because we're like 20 minutes into the video and I'm still on commando so I'm gonna try to do like two to three characters per video then because yes Okay, what's this got? This has... Okay, so maybe if I still have some extra money after the red chest, I'll get this Will-O-The-Wisp. Yeah. The red chest was... 13.19. I am still like 300-ish away. Maybe. Okay, I feel safe activating the teleporter now. That we're gonna have enough for the red chest after Tela. So let me go over and let me activate it. If this stone titan would let me. Seriously, they are so much easier to deal with in the first game than they are in the second, I swear. Okay, Clayton Schrader. Okay, let's go. Another hoppy feather, okay. Okay, okay. Oh, hey, a lunar coin. Lunar coins basically carry through your games. And so it's not like you have to get... Um, so it's not like you have to get 30 lunar coins per game to get 30 lunar coins. No, it's like I have 30 lunar coins over all the games that I've played. And one of the characters that I will be doing in one of the next couple of videos is Artificer. To get Artificer, you have to have 10 Lunar Coins, go to the blue portal, and also be the host of the game. Otherwise, you just won't get the spawn. And what it is, is it spawns the Artificer in like a crystal, like, time cage thing. And you have to pay 10 Lunar Coins to free them to get their character. So, you can actually, like, and I, and the first time I tried out Artificer, I did not like them. Like, not the, the, not the slightest bit did I like Artificer. But now, I actually like Artificer, they're one of my favorite characters now. My friend used to be an Artificer main. And, um, what he would do is he would, like, he never got any of the upgraded moves, like, ever. Ooh, yay. I love Wake of Vultures. But yeah, now that we're done, I'm gonna go run and I'm gonna collect, like, that one large chest that I saw over here. Because large chests, although they've been giving me nothing but greens, they can also drop a red. But it's like a low chance for them to drop reds, but it's happened to me a couple times before. So it's not like low, 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 low. But it is still a low chance. Like 10% chance. Like somewhere between 10 to 20% chance, I'm pretty sure. But yeah. 
This stage, I'm not even going to try to loot. I'm just going to go straight for teleporter. Okay. Also, on this stage, instead of the particles being red, they're blue. Oh, no, not Lumarian. Not Lumarian. Not Lumarian. No, not a Lumarian. Okay. Yes. Also, for characters, some of them have, like, the hardest achievements to get. Like, as Mercenary, you have to, you have to complete an entire Prismic Trial without getting hit once. That's basically like playing a monsoon run without getting hit as mercenary. One little boop on your nose can do like a damage can like it's like if you get hit either by fall damage or by like some random like or like some random thing like you can get hit by anything. A uh, lesser wisp, a too fall of a, too high up of a height. I forgot that they spawn in like that. I feel like a grandparent would be pretty fun to play as. Oh no, not the sun, not the sun! Dang it, dang it, no, not the sun, not the sun, not the sun, not the sun, not the, th not the sun. Oh yeah, beetle guards just can't die. Or at least they can't just die forever. Ooh, hey, I got the grandparent log. Let's go. That was one of the final boss logs that I needed. So now I have the grandparent log. Now all I need is like the scavenger log, I'm pretty sure. You see, Berserker's Pauldron Commando's first R1 move, aka their, like, special attack or something, is absolutely fast with Berserker's Pauldron, because Berserker's Pauldron basically means if you get a triple kill, then you go into a frenzy, which increases your attack speed, I'm pretty sure it increases your health, and... It also, um, it increases your attack speed, your, um, healing factor, <laughs> it makes you heal faster, I'm pretty sure, and it also, um, makes you do more damage, I'm pretty sure, I don't know the full effects of a frenzy, but I'm sure you can find it somewhere online. Also, yes indeed, by the end you always look goofy as frick. I know that. It's it like... It's like... Yeah. Also, the only difference between Commando's upgraded utility move and his other one, and his first one, is that he goes a little bit further with the upgraded, and you can also shoot while doing the upgraded. That is the only thing that changed. But to be honest, it's pretty much worth it, because... It's not, like, crazy, crazy. Okay. So nothing spawned on top of me yet. Is it possible to beat Risk of Rain 2 without jumping? Listen, me personally, I'm not good enough to try that. So, if anybody finds any, like, big Risk of Rain 2 YouTubers, or, like, you know, no, I'm gonna try to find a video of somebody trying to beat Risk of Rain 2 without jumping. Now, what can be classified as jumping? is whenever you jump.
I think it's kind of obvious what jumping is. Even though the YouTubers would probably start their video off, um... Kill the ball! Kill the ball! I hate being tag teamed by two Lunar Chimera. It sucks. This might be my first time actually beating the game as Commando. Do I get anything special whenever I kill one of these Lunar Chimera or something? Because of my, like, friend of vultures or something? No, no special effects or anything. Not even the Chronolable effect. <laughs> no, that'd be terrible. But yeah, for the next couple minutes, all I'm going to be doing is just charging these pillars. And then we'll be at the final boss. What did you just attack at? Oh, there's a ball over there. Okay. So now... I am going to speed run my way over to the next thing. This is actually one of the farthest of this is like the farthest I've ever gotten this commando. Cause like I almost never use commando. So that's why I never get far with him. Oh yes, I'm taking this. I had to take Brilliant Behemoth because it basically gives all of your attacks AoE and it makes all of your attacks do extra damage. It is basically one of the best red items. Not the best time, Lunar Chimera. It's actually pretty good. I like Commando. But yeah, one of these next couple pillars, I think it's one of these ones up here. But like one of these next pillars is gonna like slowly take away my health. Oh yeah, it's this one up here. It's the red pillar. I'm surprised that I got more green items. Wait, no. I think over the entire run, I think I got more green items than I did gray items. Yeah, this one charges the fastest, but it takes away your health. Which is why that it's good to have some sort of healing thing. But, like, I just have ones that make it so that way you have to... Um, hits or kill something to be able to heal, so that kind of sucks. What? No, don't tell me I'm gonna fall. Dang it, I fell. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 I refuse to die here. I refuse to die here. No, like, seriously, I refuse to die. Like, I do not want to die. Oh, dang it, I died because I lost my second hoppy feather getting the brilliant behemoth. Because the way you get, because the way you trade in some of your items for a different item is it takes away your five most recent items of that rarity in exchange for that item, basically. What does this pillar do? 
This pillar does something special, but I'm not sure what. These Lunar Chimera over here, these things are honestly a pain to deal with as mercenary. Because those things do so much damage, but their accuracy is honestly dog poo poo. They do so much damage, but their accuracy is doggy poo poo. Which is why that I love fighting these things. The thing with this one is that it charges the fastest, I think, but it has the shortest charge zone thingy. And also, it kind of takes away charge super duper fast whenever you leave the zone. Alrighty, we're at the final part of the game. Once I step through this, we'll be at Mythrix. Mythrix, king of nothing. That's my beetle guard in the background. Don't mind him, he's goofy. The first time I ever beat Mythrix, I was my first actually cool main. I mean, I was my second main back then, whenever I beat Mythrix the first time, and that was Engineer. But basically what Engineer's special stuff does is, his first attack isn't that good, you just charge it up and it fires out some pellets that explode. And his second attack, his secondary attack, basically, um, um... What does it do again? I can't exactly remember. I can't remember what it does. I'll look at it at the end of the video. But, yeah. And his second- and his utility attack. Either it has two, like, form thingies. The first one is... It makes like a shield bubble that um, you can like attack out. You can from the inside. You can attack on the out. You can attack to the outside, but I'm pretty sure. But on the outside, you can't attack onto the inside. But the thing is, anything can just walk through it. So you're not the, exactly the safest. So yeah. But then his upgraded moves makes heat-seeking arrows fire out. And they do some good damage, so yeah. And then there's his final attack. Which actually makes you able to... Um... Bleh, um it makes you able to spawn two turrets that do damage. So yeah. Okay, so in this phase, what I like to deal with first is the flying Lunar Chimera. Because they'll cause the most problems in the end. And... So yeah. Then I like to deal with the tanks because the balls cause the least problem. Because the tank ones, aka the big boys, those ones, they are so, like, their attacks are so easy to dodge because they, like, spin around in circles and stuff. It's like, they go in a squiggly line. So, that's why I like to get them first. I mean, that's why I like to get these things first, and then we'll get the tank, and I think, I think my beetle guard's already taken care of the balls, so, yeah. Beetle guards aren't useless, they can help, 
And also, a mistake that I made the other day was never, ever give an equipment drone a Hellfire Torch. A Hellfire Torch is basically, it's a blue item that basically makes it so that way you can surround yourself in a fiery bubble that does a ton of damage, but it also attacks your allies, and it also burns you, so that's, so that's a mistake giving it to the equipment drone because it not only kills itself, but it also kills its allies. Which is why you should never do that. Never make the same mistake I did. Never. Never, ever, ever. Ow. The first time I ever beat Mythics, stage 4 was a problem. Then I beat him a second time as Mercenary, and I absolutely shredded through him. And then there was the time that I actually lost to Mythrix. I was trying to help a noob beat the game in a public thing. And I just and I died to that same attack. Dang it. What what I like to call that attack is the hopscotch attack. Oh yeah, his a uh, secondary attack for engineer. It basically places down landmines. I hear the upgraded ones is the same thing, but like they walk towards these things. And this one, it takes your it like it does not tell you this, and they need to, but it takes away all your money whenever it fires out the laser. Yes, it walks and it does more damage, but it takes away all your money, so only use it on sacrifice runs. What Sacrifice is, is essentially what it does, is it makes monsters drop uh, items on death, but chests no longer spawn. But yeah, that's gonna be it for today's video, hope you all enjoyed, I might make a video later, goodbye.